After a record-breaking season and an Atlantic Sun regular season and tournament title, Kennesaw State is headed to the NCAA tournament for the very first time in program history. On Wednesday, head coach Amir Abdul Rahim and his basketball team got back to work, but not before meeting with the media to explain how they're preparing to keep their Cinderella story going. Here's what the players had to say about making it to the NCAA tournament and their successful season. It's been crazy. Like, like the whole season, he, he preaches headphones on. But it's kind of it's kind of hard to keep the headphones on during times like this. So like man, you sit back, you enjoy it for the last couple of days. But like tomorrow, like in a, about an hour, we we, we finna practice, so we gotta get back focused. Has so, anything happened? Like has someone come up to you and been like, oh my gosh, we're going to the tournament? Like have you had any kind of interactions like that? Oh every day, every day, all the time, man. But it's just you just you just appreciate it, man, and realize like this is what you work for, so it's not a surprise. How would you describe the connection on this team? Coach says that's what makes this team special. That's the difference. That's that's what's taking us to the next level. Because talent has never really been a problem with us. It's always been our, how connected we are, our continuity. Like that's what's taking it to the next level. Like talent is not really, it's never an uh, issue with us. So what what is it? Like what makes the connection so strong? What is it about you guys that are close enough? I think it started after last season. Like like times like like around this time last year, we were done. So like man, we we use this time to get closer and bond, like going out bowling. Like we're, we're both big bowling team. I'm the best bowling team by the way. Yeah, don't let don't let them tell you otherwise. Ping pong, everything like movie theaters. Uh, that's how we bond, and then that's how we, we have fun spending time with each other, whether we're on the court or off the court. You're the best bowler on the team. Yes, by far, <laughs> including the coaching staff. Really? What makes it why you're so good? What's, what do you bowl? I average about 190, 200. I'm, I'm pretty solid. My bad game is probably like 175. And Coach Amir, he, although he holds the record on me, I'm still a better bowler than him. It might not make sense, but I'm a better bowler. What's the record? I think he's like five three right now. Five five wins to three wins, but he cheats. Like he doesn't. He 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 adds the scores up throughout the whole game. He doesn't take it game by game. He adds all the scores up, which makes no sense. Yeah. How are you? What are you personally working on this week to make sure, no matter who you're facing, that you'll be ready to go? I just can't continue to do the same thing we did all season, man. Like. It's no, it's nothing. You really, you can't really put too much pressure on one game. Just keep on binding to your team, getting lost in your teammates, and then let the pieces fall where they um they lay. How special is that there are so many of you guys from Georgia here, or that went to high school here, yeah. and then be able to do that. We were just talking about that um, after the championship. It's like me and B. Stroud, like as my teammate in high school, and we we, we all the we didn't get a state championship in high school. We made up for it here, which is just crazy. It's still unbelievable. And then Casey, I played middle school ball with him. And then it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And then Quincy played play against him in AAU plenty of times. Like, this team has been knowing each other for a while now. Where's the belief come from that you guys aren't just going, you're happy to go, like, you're going because you think you can win? Oh, yeah, most, most definitely. Like, I think that's why we won a championship. Like, we knew coming into this season, man, like, although a championship is the ultimate goal, we can knock some people off in this tournament because we're more than capable of doing it. Like, more than capable. And I'm... And although we lost the our non-conference game this year, I'm glad we lost them because you learn from it and then you even had that much more confidence going to the NCAA tournament to win. How has it felt different, I don't know, compared to, to other years? Uh, just a just an atmosphere around here, man. You know, I go to Flying Biscuit. People, oh, oh good luck. Good luck at the Marsh Madness, you know. Usually when I go there, don't nobody talks to me. So now <laughs> I went there, you know, oh, my son, you know, this and that, go to Kennesaw. So it's just been great, you know, everyone noticing, you know, it's just been really good. How's that feel to finally kind of get a little bit of recognition for what you're doing? Uh, you know, it's good. It's good sometimes. But, you know, sometimes, you know, I just be wanting to enjoy a meal. But, you know, it's, it's good sometimes, man. It's good. Now, you, now you're from here. You yep. did your home, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Just how special has it been able to be able to do this in your home? You know, it's, it's really special because my dad's an AAU program. You know, I went up there, went up there Monday to talk to the kids. You know, everyone look up to me, you know what I'm saying? So just winning that and just people being able to watch me on TV is going to mean a lot to the people back home. You know, you know, some people haven't done this before. You know, just me being the first and me doing it means a lot to me and the, and the kids and his organization. Did y'all talk about that as a team? Because it's a lot of Georgia guys mm -hmm. on this roster. Um, not really, but, you know, we, we all relate, though. We came from the same area, so it's more relatable. We all got the same goals. So, you know, just being from the same city, same town, or, like, just even 10 minutes up the road, like Spence from Gwinnett, you know, just being around the area, a lot of camaraderie in there. Now you played with Chris. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. We talked about how you know you guys didn't win a championship in high school. Now, uh -huh. now you've done that year and then have the chance to do more. I guess just how unique and special is it to have a teammate from high school to, to be part of this? With you? Man, it's, it's special, man, because he knows me and I know him. Like I probably know him better than he know himself. So just being on the court with him and off the court, you know, is really good. AAU, high school, you know, just being around him, you know, he's a great guy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade him for nothing. If we, even if we didn't win, I wouldn't trade him for nothing. That's my guy. What um, you have learned about the connection with this team, and it kind of comes through like, with your bowling. Oh yeah, <laughs> bowling's a big thing with us, man. You know, I feel like I'm the best, but you know, see why I might think so. Coach Shamir might put his input on that, but me, I feel like I'm the best. What is so special about this this group that where does that bond come from around bowling maybe or something? Like when did it start? Uh, just everybody want to do something off the court, you know, just because we have roll game Fridays. We have a lot of things, you know, that's really hard during the summertime. So people just want to branch out, do something fun, do something cool during the summer, you know what I'm saying? Like enjoy the heat, enjoy each other's time. So we just did that on our off time. You know, went to go eat at Taco Mac, went to go bowling. We did a lot of stuff together. You know, that's just brings everyone together. Chris said that he believed an NCAA tournament appearance was an attainable goal, even when he signed coming after a one-win season. I assume you're going to say the same thing, but if so, why? Uh, actually, I did. I was not thinking about that. Honestly, I was just thinking here to come play with Coach Amir. You know, he's a great guy, great coach. You know, I can relate to him off the court, but I was not thinking about that until last year, maybe beginning of this year. You know, I'm happy that it came, man. I'm happy that it's here, and I'm just ready to get there, man. Can you talk a little bit about what this means more broadly for Kennesaw State University beyond basketball, your team's achievements, what it means for recognition for the university, the media attention you're getting, perhaps student recruitment, mm -hmm. funding, that sort of thing? I think it would be good, you know, get more people in here. Kennesaw, you know, more, more people to come here because people don't know what Kennesaw is about. You know, people don't know that Kennesaw is a great place. You know, more students come visit here and look at this, look at the city, look at the town. There's a lot of stuff around here that people don't know about. You know, we got one of the best cafeterias in the state of Georgia, which is very delicious. Um, you know, just a lot of stuff around here that's really good, man. What has just been um, something that you've been trying to do these, these past couple days to kind of lock in and stay focused and not get distracted by kind of all the attention now? Uh, work out and play the game. You know, it's spring break, so just play the game with my guys. You know, that keep me, you know, they know I won, so they don't want to keep talking about it. So I just play the game, you know, just keep keep, keep me level at it. What's the, the goal? Like, are you guys just happy to be going to the tournament? Or uh, I don't think it's more happy. You know, we want more. You know, job not finished, but we are happy. We are excited, but I feel like we can get us one win. One win might lead to two wins, you know what I'm saying? So just, just staying on that steady goal, just being consistent day in, day out. You know, uh, America loves a good March Madness Cinderella story. Are you okay with folks jumping on the bandwagon here in, in March? I support it. <laughs> Let's go. Jump on now. Uh, it's great, honestly, because I, I know a lot of them growing up and playing them AAU. I played a couple of them in high school. So uh, it goes, I mean, it's great being that I used to compete against them and now that they're one of my brothers and stuff. So I feel like we can we can go back and laugh at stuff like that, but just being that all of us are pretty much from the same area, it just makes it ten times better. How much do y'all look at this as an opportunity to put Kennesaw on on the map even more than it already is? Uh, I don't know if we've thought about that honestly. I think we're trying to embrace the moment. I feel like we're trying to stay in the moment. If I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think we're trying to really look too far outside of it because I feel like that's when stuff starts to go left. So I feel like. Uh, if anything, I'm gonna make sure we keeping our heads straight and we just just continue moving forward, trying to get better. Because I feel like I know a couple, I know a couple of us, especially the younger ones, they want to think about putting us on the map and stuff. And it's not about that. I feel like we gain respect as we go on, and people know like we're no pushover. So I feel like we've been doing pretty good with that. Coach, talk about how your freshman year you weren't a guy that really talked, and you had to grow into being more yeah. vocal and there was moments where you were yelling at guys on the floor and it's oh, maybe the normal he felt like this team could take the next step for you. What is the process been like as you've learned over the last couple of years what it's like to be a leader, being more vocal and maybe the impact you think it's had on your team? Ooh, looking back at or looking at it now, I can say it's uh, it's had a huge impact not only on myself but I can see it in others like they like it's an expectation for me to do this every day now being that when I was a freshman <laughs> Like, uh, he would tell me that I would have to be more vocal and stuff, and me being young, I'd be like, yeah, okay, it sounds good. But as I'm growing older and as, I'm by, as I've bought into the uh, program and the culture, I feel like 
I've accepted my role and I understand what it means to not only uh, the team, but like everybody around me. And so now that I know that, I feel like I have to be like every day I have to be stand 10 toes on the expectation and it's going to thrive through all 16 people. So me yelling at them, they know it's a place for love because they know that's not normally who I am or something. They just know I'm really like when we're on this court, it's like I'm passionate. So they don't take it no way. And I respect or not respect. I love them for that, for uh, for letting me like be vocal and kind of lead them a little bit. And I receive it as well. It's never going to be one way. If they say something to me, I'm going to take it. And if that's what they see, that's what they see. I'm going to respect. They tell me my energy isn't where it normally is. That's fine. I'm going to respond and just buying into what they're saying. Yeah. Can you talk about the growth of the fan base, though? The at capacity crowd here last Sunday, mm -hmm. what that means to you? Uh, no, it means the world to me. Uh, being that I'm right here, like 20 minutes from Kennesaw, it means the world to me. I feel like I'm at home, and so. I'm glad we're bringing back another culture that uh, that was once not lost, but it wasn't sustained. So now that we have that culture, we want to continue to keep it where it's at. So it feels great. And say how special has it been for you to be a part of this journey in your home state, just so oh. close to home? Oh, it's been special. Um, I always wanted to stay home. Not always. Growing up, I wanted to, uh, I told my parents I wanted to go far. But as I got older, uh, I wanted to stay closer to my family because I'm a family guy. So being that they can drive 20 minutes to come see uh, all the home games and stuff and uh, all my friends and family like they're just close around I feel like I feel like I'm always I don't know welcomed everywhere around here so I always want to make people feel welcome uh, for coming to the games I always want to say hey to any children any people that uh that come and say hey so I just I love the environment I can't ask for nothing better Oh, for sure. I got 100% faith in our team, I always, and 100%, no matter who we play, we're going to give them a fight. What are some of your favorite runs that teams have made in the tournament? Ooh. Like, you know, the teams that we've all grown up, you know, watching that have made crazy runs. So you mean as a Cinderella story or not a Cinderella? Oh, I watched, uh, what team was that? I want to say I was saying... Not saying, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that was that was great. Being that they were kind of similar, not as mm -hmm. like similar, but like being that, I, uh, watching that, I wanted to be like, uh, I want that to be us. Not saying that it has to be in us in order for us to prove ourselves, but I feel like that would just take uh, that would take us to the next level, uh, honestly. Terrell, how's it been um, playing for Coach Amir for the past four years? Uh, it's been great because. Uh, he sees things in me that I don't see in myself, or I didn't at least, or I won't say didn't. I still, he still sees things in me that I don't see in myself, and he find ways to bring them out of me and make me realize how uh, how inspirational I am to my teammates. So being that whatever he asks of me, I'm going to do it, whether we not, whether we on the same page or not, it doesn't matter. If whatever's asked of me, I'm gonna go ahead and do because. Uh, He's the he's my best friend. I'm gonna go ahead and say it again. I say that all the time, but he knows he knows our friendship. We love that man to death. Is it fair to say you guys have kind of embraced the underdog, the Cinderella oh, yeah. story going on? I love being the underdog. I've been the underdog my whole life, so I, I have no doubts. Like I mean, not no doubts. I love. I enjoy every bit of it. People overlooking us, and I mean, I feel like that makes the story ten times better when you're the underdog. You're a local guy. So has anyone been noticing you a little bit more going out? Like. Uh, something like that. Not really though, cause I stay out the way, so I don't really be in the mix. Like I'm, I'm not going to no parties or nothing. So if I might like go to, like get something to eat around here, somebody might say something. But other than that, I just be in my own lane, just chilling. What do people know about the Kennesaw State Owls? They've never, they never heard much they know. Hmm. Would you describe this team? I say a gritty, gritty, fast-paced team. I'd say diving for loose balls, going to put it all on the line. And you can see the enjoyment for uh, one another throughout the game. Like, you see us smiling and laughing. Or it's just, like, you can tell, like, it's every everything is genuine. Nobody cares who scores. Nobody cares who gets the rebound. Like, it's a real brotherhood, which is not – now, I wouldn't say it's not common, but it, it's kind of not common when, you, when, uh, when you're in college, everybody looking for stats and stuff. And we don't do that around here. We just want the W. You good bowler? Oh, yeah. Chris must have said something like that. Chris Estral, yeah. That sounds about right. Well, I do love the ball. I give them a, I play against them every now and again, but when they win, they don't ever let it go. So I already knew who you was talking about when you said it. <laughs> Who's the best ball on the team? 
Myself. Oh yeah, I'm the only one that put some spin on it. They don't know nothing about that. So. Of course, I knew it was gonna be them too, but they don't want to tell you what happened last time we bowled. But I'm gonna keep that under the rug. How, who started it? Like when did the bowling start about? Ooh, um, I want to say junior, junior summer. That's when we really bought into the connection and stuff, going like team outings. We uh. We did a couple things. We went in October. We went to the little fright fest. We just did a little stuff like that. So, being that they loved the ball, they invited a team, and of course, it became real competitive quick. So this year, you started, or last, last year? Last year, yeah. And then it definitely carried over to any chance we get. Y'all want to ball? So, I guess it's like our a little mantra now, I guess, or something like that. I've been telling people this for about three weeks now. This is not an Amir Abdur Rahim thing. This is not even just a Kennesaw State basketball, men's basketball program thing. This is a time to really highlight this unbelievable university we have. I, I told somebody yesterday on one of the radio shows, you know, you look up at the banners and our volleyball team is really, really good and have been for a while. Look at our track team, our baseball team last year, our football program, you know, had been started from scratch by Bo Coach Bohan and, and it's just had unbelievable success. And I could go on and on and on. Our women's basketball program is on the rise. And so just to be able to highlight our university, be the source of, you know, what brings people here. And, you know, you just want to do your part. You want to you want to just do your part at the end of the day and be a great teammate. How do you, I don't know, try to keep things as normal as possible yeah. when it's, it's so different and there's now so much attention on you guys? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, uh, we told our guys in the locker room after the game, and they probably hate me for it because um, they they want to celebrate it, and they should because they've done – They I should say – they have um, accomplished an amazing achievement. But when you have a vision, all right, and you know that there's more in the tank and that the way we built this thing, um, we're capable of going into that tournament and winning, um, you, you have to keep it as normal as possible. Yeah, let them enjoy it, let them celebrate it, but then let's get them back focused as quickly as possible. How do you prepare this week when you don't know who you're going to face yeah. yet? Like, what, what things are you trying to work on now? Well, again, you know, uh, I had uh, Mike Caruso, uh, who was Alex Caruso's dad, who I was fortunate enough to coach at uh, Texas A&M. He texted me last night, and he goes, it's not about who you play. It's about you. And it was perfect because that was my – that had been my mindset anyway. You know, regardless of whoever we play, we know we're going to play a great team next week. We know that it's – you know, 68 teams get to participate in this tournament. And there's no bad teams in this tournament. And so the way that we prepare is by focusing on us. Um, I watched the Liberty game last night for the second or third time. I can't remember. Just trying to make sure when we go in the film today that we have the areas that we need to improve in. Because even though we won the game, there were still some things that we could have done better um, defensively. There were some things that we could have done better offensively. And I just want to make sure we, we clean those things up going into the tournament next week because there's no margin for error in that tournament. It's a possession you know, game almost every game. So we've got to be sharp and make sure that we're where we need to be. Going back to one thing you said earlier, when you look at teams that have made runs in the tournament or mm -hmm. had great performances in the tournament, like right. I think of UMBC. Yeah. And then yeah. that brought so much attention and even like, you know, an attendance to that school. Absolutely. How are, are y'all looking at that as kind uh, of an opportunity? So Keith Shunzel, who's our volleyball coach here, uh, four years ago, uh, Keith has been a great friend. He's been uh, – even in a sense, a great mentor. I was a young head coach when I got here, right? And, you know, between him, Scott Whitlock, Ag Agnes Baranato, who was our former women's coach. The thing I love about Kennesaw State is we, we have really good head coaches here, and it's a real family. Like, we, we pour into each other. We help each other. But Keith and I talked about this four years ago. This is a true story. And we talked about, he talked about how, hey, man, get it going. Because when you, when your name is called on Selection Sunday or our name is called on Sele Selection Sunday, this is what it does to the university. And I told him, I said, I I've been at Murray State where, you know, you're kind of tucked away in the westernmost part of Kentucky. And nobody knows where <laughs> Murray State is, right, unless you're just a basketball enthusiast. Uh -huh. Well, when we beat Vandy in 2010 on a buzzer beater, our, our enrollment skyrocketed, right? And now with 43,000 students already here, I don't know how much more I want it to skyrocket, but we do want, because traffic gets crazy around yeah. here when the students <laughs> here, okay? But we, we want to enhance our university. That's part of, you know, 
them allowing us, giving us the resources to go out and play this game. You know, it's in a sense, it's return on investment. So we want to be that for our university. So yes, we've talked about it. I can't wait to see how it impacts the university because again, it's not a Coach Amir thing. It's not a just a men's basketball thing. This is a Kennesaw State University moment. How yep. special has it been to be able to do it in your home uh, city as well, yeah. your home state? It doesn't get any better than that. Um, you know, the other night, uh, to have seven, I think it was six or seven of my, the 13 <laughs> of my brothers and sisters here, um, to look up and see my mom sitting up there. Uh, my dad, he passed in 20, um, right at, uh, in July of 20. And, you, you know, we, I miss him every day. You know, I miss him every day. But to see my brothers and sisters sitting in that, in the stands and cheering us on, my dad was here, right? So, it's special because this same community that I played high school basketball in um, that four years ago when I literally told my ID, I said, you want to get people in these stands, we've got to recruit Georgia. We've got to keep our kids here. And when I got the job, we had two kids on the, on the roster from the state. I think we have eight or nine now. And the reason why this arena was as full as it was on Sunday and really the last month of the season is because we have unbelievable kids from this state that want to be at Kennesaw State. They're not looking at anything else. They want it to be here. And for me, that's what makes it special. Because when I took this job, I had people that told me, why would you leave Georgia You know, when you got Anthony Edwards coming in and you helped recruit him and he's going to be the number one pick? Well. Anthony gave me his blessing to take the job, okay? But the other part of it was, was I wanted to be here. The challenges here excited me. And I'm, I'm just glad God spoke to me and gave me peace about it to be standing where I am now. What did Anthony tell you? So before I took the job, like, cause you know, you recruit a kid, like you recruit any kid um, and you give your word, you're gonna be there. Yeah. You know, you don't wanna go back on that. And I'm not saying every coach isn't like that, okay? But this is a true story get in touch with Ant somehow, he'll tell you. But I called him and I said, hey man, I have an opportunity, you know, to become a head coach. But if you want me, if you need me here at UGA with you, man, I'm not gonna take it. And he goes, you gotta know Anthony. He's like, brother, <laughs> you know, man, take that job. And the funniest part about it, he said, man, I'm only gonna be there eight months. I said, yeah, you know what, you're right about that. <laughs> you know, so, so, but he was, he was great. You know, uh, he and, he and everybody, like Winfrey Jordan, who's one of the uh, um, local legendary grassroots guys with the Atlanta Express, it was the same thing. I called Winfrey to say, hey, look, this is what I got. Nah, brother, you gotta take that job. And so, you know, that's why I say it's not a me thing right now. Um, it's a it's a community thing because I'm not standing here without those grassroots coaches, without those high school coaches that allow us to recruit their kids. You know, I mean, think about this, guys. Royal Maxwell at East Coweta, okay, gave us, and I say gave us, and we worked at it, but gave us his two best players in the same class in Chris Youngblood and Brandon Stroud. That's unheard of, right? And so he trusted us. He trusted our vision, but he knew we would develop them as men. So, again, I'm not here without the community. I know you mentioned connection, but what point in this season did you feel like this team was special and had the chance to make a run like this? So, this is going to sound weird because normally it comes, people will say, well, after we won this big game. We went to San Diego State. Um, it was like right after finals. <laughs> and it's the wrong time to go to San Diego State, guys, just so you know. <laughs> but, I, I mean, we go out there, and I think we ended up getting beat almost 30. And they're really good. I mean, I think they're top 20 in the country right now. And after that game, normally, you, you know, you get beat like that. It can shake you a little bit. Um, it can make you question what you're doing, how you're doing it. And I just remember coming back uh, to campus to practice. You know, we were on Christmas break then, and we had a couple of games. I, I can't quite remember who it was. I think USC Upstate was one of them. But their approach to practice after that San Diego State game, it was their energy. But I'll never forget, I'm like, Terrell Burton would not talk as a freshman. Like, I'm not exaggerating. I would give him a play call. Hey, Rail, we're running this. He just dribbling the ball up the court. The other four guys are like, what are we running? And I'm like, real, you got to tell them to play. And, and so we get back to that practice and Terrell, uh, somebody didn't dive on the floor. 
All right, we're big on being first to the floor. And Terrell jumps him. I'm talking about jumps him. Like, get on the floor. Like, man, that, like, that's part of the, and like, he just goes. For a guy that wouldn't talk three years ago, he was like, I didn't have to hold him accountable. He did. But whoever it was, I, I want to say it was Brandon Stroud, and he might get mad at me for saying <laughs> that. But Brandon stood up and he said, I got you one. That's, that, he called each other by their numbers. He said, I got you one. And I was like, okay. I said, okay, let's go. And that was, that was the moment for me. That was the moment.